How many tools can I fit in my car? I think you'll be surprised. Hi, Len here. I've been building for three years, still got the same car, and I constantly get people telling me how amazed they are at what I fit in there. So let's go take a look. When I started building, the first thing I did was build a toolbox in the back. And that was big enough initially, but I ran out of room once I started getting a few extra tools. So I built this about a year into my apprenticeship when I started working for CJ Neal Construction. It was all leftover flooring from a renovation that we were doing at the time. It's been sitting in there for about two years now. With all the weight in there, it's slowly sagging down. So uh, I started to scrape on the back. I've been meaning to put a string across here so that I can just pull it up to open it. It's also fixed down to the chassis of the car so no one can break in and just pull the whole box out. I would need to get in there, take the drawer out, undo the bolt and pull it out that way. So it's really just a matter of making it as difficult to steal as possible. I had to get quite organized to fit everything in there and as I've accumulated tools, I've moved a few to the front as well just to get the weight off the suspension because it's already pretty well maxed out. I guess that's the down side of having a car versus something a bit bigger and heavier. Alright so first off on a few hooks here I've got my impact driver and my drill with two and a half amp batteries on there. I only run these two and a half amp batteries on my drill and driver just because the power output is a bit lower than the four amp batteries so they end up overheating if you use them on a bigger tool. My blower which I built probably about a year and a half ago. If you haven't seen one of these, um, it's not surprising. Quite a few people pick this up thinking it's an impact wrench or something. Oh, that's a bit light. What is it? Is that a blower? It's pretty impressive. So this is a rotary hammer. I got this with a six piece kit initially with my impact driver and drill. You have to start putting these on the driveway though. Right, nail gun. Trusty Pazload. This was the 2021 version, new and improved. It's been okay. Bradder, which I bought about six months into my apprenticeship. Thought about getting a pass load, but this actually worked out cheaper when I got this little adapter. It means I can run the Makita batteries on there, so that saved me about 500 bucks. Maybe if I get the framer, I will invest in some Milwaukee batteries, or maybe I won't. I'll see. Reciprocating saw or saber saw. Hardly even use it. That's pretty much a demolition tool, or when you've screwed something up. Impact wrench. I got this at the monster tool sale about six months ago. Five inch grinder so that was oh, sheesh don't want to lose that this was part of the six piece kit that i bought initially as well 125 or i guess it's five inch circular saw or off japan i've done a separate video on that link up here somewhere or maybe in the description two sanders so the five inch orbital sander which heaps of people have that's not that great but it does give you a better finish than this one this will take off a lot more but because it's vibrating rather than random orbital, it will leave scratches. So when I did my bench top, I used this one for the finishing. Planer, this is an 18 volt planer. 40 volt one wasn't out at the time, but I got this on redemption when I bought the six piece XGT kit. Multi-tool, I think that was first tool I bought after my six piece kit. There's a 40 volt version coming out, which is identical, which is a little bit of a shame. There is a patent out for one that has a different shaped front which is a bit narrower because honestly the width of this is a bit of a hassle, it gets in the way. All in all it's a way better multi-tool than the previous two versions and you definitely feel that when you're doing quite a bit of cutting line. Jigsaw and router, so I got these at the same time as the impact wrench, not quite six months ago. I've used this surprisingly quite a lot, I used it in the Prentice of the Year competition and I've used it for cutting weatherboards quite a bit and doing scrubbers. And router, I used it on the plywood shed that we built in the last video and I've used it for putting an arras on things, a few things like that, but hasn't had a massive amount of use. And of course, radio, every building site needs one. This is the 40 volt one, which will also take 18 volt and 12 volt batteries. I tend to run the 18 volt batteries because I don't usually need them as much. Well, sometimes I do and I've got to slap a 40 in there. Or you can run it off the mains as well. Beside the box I've got a little space here, so I've got my framing square or roofing square depending on who you talk to. My 300 speed square, good for cutting beams and lintels. Oh, brand new saw blade, should be on the other side. On this side I've got a couple of small clamps. Another saw blade, what? Huh, oops, didn't realize they had two new ones. And saw, a lot of people don't carry one around. 
definitely worth having. Coping saw, I don't use that much. I tend to use my power tools to do the coping, but occasionally I will use this. Here's a spare blade for my 125. So this is a trim blade for my 185 saw, which I haven't showed you yet actually. And a few older blades. I can probably ditch a few of these, but they're good if you're doing some demolition and you know you're going to be cutting through nails. New blade for my drop saw, which I also haven't showed you yet. Oh, another blade. One, two, three, four, five old blades. Actually, no, one of them is a decent blade. I think I've got the Hardy's blade on the saw. You're probably wondering what these carpet things are. <laughs> Some saw horses. Carpet's on there for easing doors. And they've got a little holder in there that they sit in so they don't slide around. All right, so that's the back. That's most of the power tools. Let's go look inside. More tools. Here's my 1800 level, I'll get that out. I used to have it down there, but I'm too scared of it getting damaged. Bought an extendable ladder before I started building, thinking it would be the most useful, and don't get me wrong, it is, but it's also quite heavy. You can take the inside part out. I don't think you're supposed to use it like that, but I confess I do sometimes. I uh, built this when I got the drop saw. The idea, same as what you'd have in a van, is basically you cannot get into it or see it from the top so that someone just smashes a window, they can't go grabbing my tools out. Here's my big circular saw that came as part of the six piece kit and that's got the Hardy's blade on it. We actually just used it for cutting the barrier line for a firewall last week. Don't use it that much, I prefer the smaller one most of the time, but this is good for depth of cut really, more than anything. My 216mm circular saw. I bought this a few months ago, let me know if you want me to do a review on it. I just don't know when I'll get to it. Probably next time i do some trim. Maybe here. Up here I've got my sockets for my impact wrench. A lot of the things in between, it's easier to get them in from the back as long as I've got the saw horses out, it gets a little bit clustered in there. I might come back to that actually. And here I've got my batteries. There's a few apprentices around the country running with this box, it's quite handy. In that box I've got two chargers, four 4 amp XGT batteries and three, sometimes four, 18 volt batteries. The fourth one's charging the camera. Tucked in here is my tool belt. I've done a full review on this one if you want to check that out. I'll give you a quick rundown of what I've got in here while I'm at it. Hammer, of course. Chalk line. Knife. Nips. Blunt chisel. I've put a little plastic bottom of a bottle in there. Just so that this doesn't stab holes in the pouch. I don't normally carry a string line in there. Little combination square. Big one I'll get to later. A long impact driver bit. And a right angle impact driver bit. I also carry it's a little uh, Allen key which works on the nail gun, jigsaw, quite a few tools we'll use this. I think it's a 4mm. My impact driver bits, heaps of people have these. I have it in my pouch rather than hanging from it because if you bump these sometimes the bits will fall out. Come to think of it, I'm going to be I think tier 2 monetized very soon. I can sell things I think on my channel and you can donate money which will be awesome because I get nothing for this at the moment. So I might start selling little things like this. Let me know in the comments if you're keen on that. Uh, laser distance measure. Again, I don't always carry that around. This side, doggy bar, cat's paw, whatever you want to call it. Two punches, good roll, tape, brand new tape. Um, broke my last week. Speed square, of course. That normally doesn't live in there. I used that last week. Miscellaneous screws. Gun nails in this pouch here. And this one is currently just holding sawdust. Sometimes I'll put my torpedo level in there if I'm using it. Gun loop on the back there. Cell phone holder too. And a Tanos case, or two Tanos cases actually. So these Tanos cases, uh, they kind of like the Milwaukee pack out and whatnot. The main benefit of these is they've just got the T-lock, so it's a one-handed operation. These are Sustainer 3, I think it is. Sustainer cubed, I'm not actually sure. A lot of people confuse that with the original Sustainer. These are the same dimensions but a completely different locking mechanism and a lot easier. Whereas the old ones, which includes Mac Pack, awful to use and put a lot of people off the whole system. Anyway, let's get back to it. A uh, countersink bit, miscellaneous driver bits, including a uh, self centering drill bit, planer gauge, and planer. These are actually the solid planer blades, I've never used them. And some. Um, Disposable planer blades, miscellaneous drill bits, including the self centering, the other self centering one. I had three and I lost one. Little saw blades, jigsaw blades, some for cutting weatherboards, multi tool blades, 
attachments for that little blower that I showed you. So that's quite good for sweeping. That just blows a whole bunch of air. Apparently you can use this to blow things up. Not like explode. Um, and dust port for my 125 saw. It's a dust port for the jigsaw. Never used it. Knife blades. Voltage detector. Drill bits, mostly masonry bits. Fizzle bits. Pencils. Big case has my bigger tools in it. And my stud finder, which I think I mentioned in the handrail video, is not actually that great. Allen keys. This is an okay kit, except they tend to fall out. Here's another socket set. So these are the shallow socket ones, which I mostly keep because it's got a 15 mil in here, which we use for handy bracks. The other socket set doesn't have a 15 mil in it. It's got a 16, but that takes a bit of damage when you're putting in 15 mil bolts. You know, 15 mil here. More impact driver bits, it's just the kit. The bits themselves are great. The kit, I'm not particularly impressed with. It's just not big enough. I bought this about a month ago, new drill set. I bought it more for the case than anything. The blue mold case that I had was just hopeless. The holders would keep coming out and the bits were quite tight in there. Whereas this one, they're quite loose and easy to get out, but tip it the wrong way, they all fall out. The router bits. Got one in the router, but the rest are there. I do want to buy a smaller one of these ones for doing my bench shop. The arrows on this is just a bit too big. And also you want a smaller one for doing decking too. Chisel set. Don't know if they're still on special at placemakers, but they were a few weeks ago. I've had these for over a year and they're doing great. I do recommend them and they're not horrendously expensive. I think they're about $200 for the set. Hole saw set. I had a smaller hole saw set, uh, one of those DIY ones that weren't that great. Bought these ones, they absolutely chew through framing. They do tend to make a bit of a rough cut, so if you're doing door hardware, just be careful with that. Oh, and also it's got a masonry bit, so you can cut through linear weatherboard too. And underneath, let's have a look. Not one, two. 900 mil clamps, very handy for frames because studs are 600 mil apart normally, so when it comes to clamping your corners together, these are perfect. Miscellaneous fixing, screws, whatnot, window screws, jot nails, they're both almost empty, and an almost full pack of framing nails. By the way, I'm going to put links in the description for all the related videos to this. Miscellaneous tools, reviews, etc. Let's go into this awkward space in between. First thing inside, I've made a little tray. Cam, my old foreman, takes credit for that one. Just for holding all these little miscellaneous tubes, mostly glue and MS. Right, so here we've got my foam gun and some expanded foam. Just one tube, some CRC, which is like WD-40. Corking gun, spray bottle with soapy water for doing MS. CA glue, the uh, quick set glue I use for doing architraves. Flap disc for my grinder. I have got another one somewhere. It's starting to rain. She should better hurry up. This bin has miscellaneous tools in it. 300 combi square, bevel, Block plane, uh, rip guide, 30 meter tape. What do you call these? Vice grip bendery things. I think I've used them once. Torpedo level wood file screwdriver. Oh, I was looking for that the other day. Another combi square. Oh, this is the Empire one. This one's better. Hammer taker, tin snips, what have I missed? Adjustable wrench or spanner, whatever you call it. Painter's tape, bog, VA, probably be in the other container. Vice grips. Probably be in here, bare chalk, red and blue, should probably get some black chalk at some point. Grease for impact driver and dyno drill or rotary hammer. Filler, paint, so this is great for doing the ends of weatherboards, not so good for scribers. So I've got some normal primer as well, paint brush, which is probably past it. PVC cement, it was left over from the tiny house I think. So that's sort of all painting and filling stuff there. And this box is more PPE and just a few miscellaneous things. So dust mask, glove, the other gloves inside, I saw that. Oh, there's the other flap disc. Um, cutting discs, the other chalk line, sandpaper, brads, 16 gauge brads. Comment, argue about that. Spare tape, again, I don't recommend Milwaukee tapes. You'll notice I have a lot of Milwaukee hand tools. 
tapes, not tapes. What's this? A grinding disc and the other flap disc. Black tape. Oh, contour gauge, which I used for doing some um, floating flooring. Right, I'm almost done. There's a few little crevices that I've got tool stashed in. This one will surprise you. I'm gonna get, go to the front to get this out. 10 pound sledgehammer. And breaker bar. The smaller one, it's all I could fit in there and it's easy to handle too. It does most of the job. 600 level. 800 extendable level. 1200 level. So I've got, how many levels have I got? Five? It's also where my car jack is. Although, funny story, if I ever need to change a tire, I've got to take this whole box in the back out. I have had to do that once. Safety glasses, headlamps, so very handy at this time of year when it's dark in the mornings and in the evenings, although it's getting better. And uh, when you've got to do apprentice stuff and crawl around under floors, which I'll probably be doing this week. Jelly bin for my lunch, or esky, I guess you call it an Aussie. Nail gun, battery charger, and the cord for my radio too, which I never use. Rain jacket. Rain pants are stashed in under here somewhere. Sandwich press. Drink bottle, coffee cup, that probably needs a wash. Hat. And the rubbish bin. So uh, what do we got? Plastic wrappers for glasses. An invoice for something that I don't need. Random pair of gloves. Pie wrappers. Really starting to rain. I better pack up. So as an apprentice or a builder even, do you need a van? It depends. The only real downside of this is I can't go picking up long lengths of timber, skirtings or sheet materials that you need a van or a truck for. But hopefully in my new job, I won't need to be doing a lot of that anyway. It'd be awesome if I get a van, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world. But that's it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. All right, I better pack this stuff away, eh? Oh yeah, earmuffs, I forgot about them. They normally sit in there.